Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, first of all, for the invitation to be here. I'm super excited. I know there's a couple of people that are, are, have joined us that uh, know me, that have met me before, so it's exciting to have, uh, I guess, to know that there are familiar faces and people that I've met before. Um, uh, as uh, Sarah said, I am a uh, Mission for Community Engagement in the Diocese of Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, some things have changed since I sent uh, that <laughs> uh, um, biography. I am the host of the Way of Love podcast with the Bishop Michael Curry, uh, not just the co-host. We uh, sadly lost our, uh, uh, well, Kyle, Kyle Oliver uh, went to do great things as, as we know he, he does uh, with his work. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you again. I would love to start with uh, a prayer that we can find in our, in our guidebook, the story, uh, our story sharing guidebook, which we will talk about um, later on today um, what, during the presentation. And then we'll get started uh, talking about the power of sharing our stories. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, your son Jesus Christ started stories to show us your kingdom. Be with us now as we learn to share our own stories and help us to use story sharing to grow more deeply into the beloved community you would have us be. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, as I mentioned, all the other things that I do, aside from that, I am a story weaver. Uh, story weavers are a multilingual group of young adult leaders trained in story sharing. We go across the Episcopal Church to share our stories and guide others to share theirs to build community. As story weavers, we also record and collect stories of people throughout the Episcopal Church and hope that to use them in our platforms to continue this work of becoming beloved community. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the power of story sharing and our stories through the story sharing campaign out of the Beloved Community Initiative. Um, and to share our resource, which will help you if you decide to uh, take advantage of it and use it in your communities, uh, will help you facilitate the transformative experience of story sharing. So we'll start by talking about what is the story sharing campaign. The story sharing campaign, it is part of the evangelism and racial reconciliation initiatives of the Episcopal Church. If you'd like to learn more about those initiatives and other initiatives that the Episcopal Church has, you can uh, go on their website, episcopalchurch.org, and then and there you'll find um, more information. So this campaign, the story sharing campaign, um, seeks to help faith communities and individuals to share and receive, not only share, but also receive stories of faith, race, and difference, and to become more effective leaders, healers, reconcilers, and ambassadors of Christ in the world. This sort of event, this sort of gatherings can be done within your congregations, between different Episcopal congregations near yours or far, with friends, family, neighbors, faith communities, and so on. A resource, which is our guidebook, um, is a guide, not a manual. It's a guide, it's, it's a set of, of curated tools and questions that can be used to promote conversations, again, about faith, race, and difference. And thanks to God, it is available in English and in Spanish uh, for uh, congregations um, across the Episcopal Church. It is a very simple uh, manual to use, simple, um, um, yes, simple guidebook. It is broken down into sections to allow you to figure out how to best implement um, whatever, all the information there into your context. Um, you'll find an introduction, then how to use the guidebook, the steps, the different techniques, the tools, and then questions that you can use to start those conversations. Something important to note, um, there we go, faith, race, and difference, all the themes that we, um, we talk about. We, why do we call it uh, story sharing and not storytelling? Um, we call it story sharing, not storytelling, not because we think storytelling is wrong, but because uh, we, storytelling is usually used to persuade, not in a bad way, is, is used, is, used uh, is about convincing and is, is, it can be one-sided. For example, when we tell a story to children, they usually listen to us and we're looking for them to learn something from it, correct? Uh, while story sharing is engaging, is relational, and it allows, allows for connections and relationships to be created. In this, in story sharing, both parties have the opportunity to share 
um, and it has a hospitable, respectful, and generous space uh, is created, especially because of the themes that we focus on. It's important to have the, that sort of space created. Um, when we do this sort of gatherings, this sort of gatherings for people to share their stories uh, with each other, it is important always to start with a prayer. Like as, as good Episcopalians or Christian uh, people, um, it's always good to start with prayer, to put God in the middle of it. But also it's very important um, to also communicate before the beginning, we go, before you start sharing any stories, it is always important to communicate and create as a group expectations and guidelines for the time you'll be spending together sharing. Because we hope for a safe and brave space created so that everyone is comfortable and able to share. In story sharing, there are no observers. That is, this, this is very important for us to know. In story sharing, there are no observers, only participants. But it is always, always good and important to have someone to serve as a facilitator, someone who will guide the conversation, pose the questions, and kind of feel and read the room in case anything happens. Because again, faith, race, and difference can be themes that bring out stories that are either painful, sad, or controversial, but that's okay. It's good to be uncomfortable sometimes to have these important questions as Christians. Um, this facilitator will also be a participant. They will not only observe and, and facilitate the gathering, they will also serve as a participant. So why should I share my stories? Right, that's a good question. Why should I share my story, my stories? Why not? Why not? But also sharing the greatest story of Jesus is what we do through the gospel and what the disciples were tasked to do and what we as followers of Jesus are called to do, to share the story of Jesus, the greatest story ever told, and our own weaved into that story of Jesus. In our guidebook, it tells us that when we share our stories, we share the love of God. We share the love of God uh, we have found in Jesus, not only to fill feel, feel our, our pews um, or to make the parish budget. We share the love of God so that we may become agents of good news and reconciliation in our churches, communities, and in the world. Sharing our stories is important because I have noticed in my life, in my own experience in other places, that we tend to think that we know our fellow Christians, our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow parishioners, or even our own family members well enough, but sometimes we don't. So story sharing allows us to find those moments to be intentional with our inner circles to share, to listen, and learn about their experiences and then reflect anew on our own experiences. There's always something new to learn from each other, that's for sure. And one time uh, I heard someone say that the shortest distance between two people is a story. So I think we need to do more of that, you know, create more ways for people to gather together to share their experiences and build beloved community. When we share our stories, we challenge ourselves to share our fears, our failures, but also our blessings. Then we invite others to do more, to more, to do the same and see that our stories for as far as controversial, as sad as they may be, they still speak of God. I think it is also very especially important during this time that we're going through as a country and as a world um, to not only implement, but make story sharing a way of life. I think a lot of times we miss on a blessing someone, someone else could bring to our lives or vice versa because we are too afraid to just be bearers of love and share who we are through our stories and our experiences. That's not easy, I know it's not, but it is necessary. It is necessary to change our lives and our world. The power of sh story sharing changes lives. It has changed mine through story sharing and through sharing my story through this project and through the podcast, The Way of Love with people and, and, and across the church, sharing even those moments that are sometimes difficult to talk about. Um, I have built long lasting relationships. My assumptions of others have changed. My story has empowered others that look like me to share theirs. I have been able to have difficult but also life-changing conversations with my family and friends. And in all of it, I have been able to see God work through me and, and through those around me. Story sharing is biblical. It is biblical and we know it and we've seen it. The Bible has a ton of stories that speak of faith, race, and difference that we could use 
as references when having these conversations that still speak to our realities today in the world. For example, as you see, a good example of, of a story in the Bible uh, of difference um, is this, the story of the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 25 to 37. It's, it's, it, it could, this could be a good story to use when, and then for, for when creating that space for people to share their story and do story sharing, then encourage people to take notes and reflect on what they heard and what they were, read, then post a question that will guide them through a time of personal stories related to that story. A good example of questions you can find in our guidebook, which has is broken down in sections again. And there's a section that has a, a lot of questions, a couple of questions broken down into the themes, uh, faith, race, and difference that you could adapt um, to um, your, uh, um, your gatherings of story sharing. An example of a question uh, of difference that you'd use when using this story of the Good Samaritan could be share a story about when a stranger and someone offered you hospitality. How did your experience, how did you experience God, experience God in this situation? Or there are other different methods that you can find on our um, uh, guidebook, um, maybe a story circle, which I'm sure you've all experienced before, but using those questions that create and that are easy to understand and, and encourage people to find um, an experience and a story uh, that they can share related to that. A lot of times people say, I don't know, I don't have a story. There's always a story. Stories are important and stories are powerful. There's always a story on anything that you can think of. Maybe you need a couple of minutes to remember. There's always times, there, there, there have been times also when people have said, oh, I, there have so many stories that I can pick from. So there's always something you can find. Um, so there are tons of ways uh, to use our guidebook, but sadly we don't have that much time to go over it thoroughly. And you will see that a lot of the things you'll find on the guidebook are things, like I said, you've done or experienced before, which is, we just frame it on faith, race, and difference. So I do hope you decide to take a look and use it. It could be the beginning of something wonderful in your lives and in your communities. I see that it's time to, to do a little prayer. All right. So in, Sarah, in solidarity with the Episcopal Diocese of Washington, as well as St. John's Lafayette Square, um, they're hosting um, a prayer vigil at this time. Um, and so we will um, hold them in silence and meditation for a minute. And then Sandy and I will close us in prayer. Loving God, in Jesus, you were bullied, beaten, and killed. You are always on the side of those whose souls or bodies are mistreated. While I cannot be present with my body at the protest right now, I stand with all those who stand up for justice. Uphold them, keep them safe. Grant us the courage to stand beside all who are harmed by the violence of racism with our bodies and in our prayers. Give us the words to speak out for those whose breath has been taken. Enkindle our hearts the fire of your love that together we might end the scourge of racism that has infected our nation. Dios de amor. En Jesús fuiste acosado, fuiste golpeado y te mataron. Siempre estás del lado de aquellos cuyas almas o cuerpos son maltratados. 
Aunque no puedo estar presente con mi cuerpo en las protestas en este momento, estoy de pie con todos los que se levantan por la justicia. Defiéndelos. Dale seguridad. Danos el valor de acompañar con nuestros cuerpos y en nuestras oraciones a todos los que son lastimados por la violencia del racismo. Danos las palabras para hablar por aquellos cuyo aliento han sido cortado. Enciende en nuestros corazones el fuego de tu amor para que juntos podamos terminar con la plaga del racismo que ha infectado nuestra nación. Amén. Amén. Yes, thank you all for taking that time for us to, to pray in solidarity. I think, again, as I mentioned earlier during my presentation, story sharing, it's a good way to, 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 to be um, bearers of love, warriors of love um, in this time of uncertainty, in this time where um, there's so much um, hatred and, and, and fear in a lot of, uh, in a lot of lives. Um, but yes, so um, like I mentioned, there's different ways um, and there's store and questions that could be used in our guidebook. Um, so circles and then posing a question that could guide the conversation uh, on a specific theme or, or all the themes um, at once. Um, so before um, I, I open up for questions, um, I know this is short time, but this is just kind of a taste of what story sharing could be in your context. Um, and if you have any other questions, I will share um, all my information and the link for the guidebook with Sarah that she can, that she'll be able to pass it around for those interested in using and implementing story sharing um, in their context. Uh, I would like to share a video of some of the stories from our story weavers, our own story weavers, when we gather for the first time. Um, and when we go and do these sort of presentations, we always find a way to share our own stories. So we are not just facilitating the conversation, we're also being part of the conversation and bring ourselves into that community. Um, and that's important. And as I mentioned, that's, the, it's, that's why we call it story sharing, not just storytelling. Uh, there may be parts that you won't understand uh, because they're in different languages, but that's okay. That's the beauty of story sharing. Uh, we welcome people's stories as they are. Adjust your volumes as, 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 as you're able and I am Sandy Milien. I am from La Caña de Azúcar. I am from Arroz con Pollo and Diluyacua. I am from the blackness that is avoided. I am from the burnt tires and the continuous protests outside my house. I am from a place where it's humid, hot, yet refreshing. I am from a place where mommy holds me in her arms so I can sleep. I am from the hardworking Haitians in the countryside and the Dominicans in Villa Gautier. I am from the saying, il y a un temps pour chaque chose. I am from the dining table where we laugh, where we cry, where we hold hands, pray and kiss. I am from la despedida antes de dormir. I am from the church. I am from the hymnal and from el pandero. I am from a place where I am still a little girl. I am from a world where I didn't know who I am. I am from a world where the unknown is beautiful, a world where I want to belong. Wonderful. I hope you were able to hear it. Uh, I hope you were able to enjoy it. Um, it's still powerful every time I hear my own story, every time I hear the story of my fellow story weavers. Um, I love it. I think it's a, it's a wonderful way um, for us to see God without naming it, to see Jesus without naming it in our own stories um, and welcome the story of others. Um, when we did this uh, exercise, we had known each other for maybe uh, a day and a half. And these are one of the closest people that uh, I've met and they're wonderful. And we're still doing this work together uh, to change the world one story at a time. I know story is not the only way to evangelize, to share uh, the wonderful things God has done and Jesus has done and will, be, and will do in our lives, but it's a great start. And if, if that's all you can, that's all you have, that's enough. I would like to open it to, um, to, to, to maybe some questions. I know we have, I have a couple of minutes for questions um, and anything else that uh, I can do for you. I, I'm also, I also speak Spanish. So if there are Spanish speakers that would like to ask a question, let me know. I will do it in Spanish and try to translate, translate it quickly for everyone as well. 
think everyone is just singing your praises. Um, we <laughs> did have a question about um, how to find the guide. Um, yeah. And so that was linked up above and we will go ahead and um, I'll put it in the links once again. And it will also go out as part of all of our resources um, that, that will be um, included is in, our, in our email. Yes. Um, Allison rightly points out for those pastors who are overwhelmed with everything right now, um, uh, would there be a way to incorporate this kind of storytelling in worship to give us a break from preaching? For sure. For sure. Yes. So the guidebook <laughs> is very simple and very easy to understand. Various ways you can implement it during a sermon to kind of introduce the idea, introduce a question. It's always, I have always find it helpful, at least for me, the way my brain works to have a structure, to have a kind of a question that frames the conversation. Um, so yes, the guidebook has a, a section where you can incorporate it after, during a sermon, during coffee hour, um, all kinds of, 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 of places and times during, during uh, Sunday services or even after that. So yes, for sure. Yes, take a break. You need a break. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea. Like that if that's the thing that you take away, like that is the perfect entree um, into, into worshiping communities. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, I think there was a question about sort of incorporating bele becoming beloved communities um, mm -hmm. across um, parishes. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say reach out to your becoming beloved community coordinator, either yeah. diocesan or regional. Um, in order to make some of those, um, some of those introductions. Correct. I don't know if you, do you have any other thoughts on that, Sandy? Um, no, that's, that's correct. And if you don't have one, then um, this is a great opportunity to do that. I think, I think everything in life just adds up at the right time. And I think God is telling us something at this time. Beloved mm -hmm. community needs to happen. Story sharing needs to happen. We need to listen to each other um, and across uh, uh, churches, across towns. They're not too far. Most of our churches are not too far from each other. So reach out. To your to your clergy, to your um, lay leaders, um, they'll find a way. Um, we need you just to be open to do that, the hard work and those uncomfortable conversations. I always tell people, it we need to start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's the important part. Yeah, um, our one of our chaplains, Kara, mentioned that in southwestern Virginia, they did a combination of. Um, uh, story sharing and music makes that makes community Ooh. and I think that that is a natural pairing yeah. um, yes another thing and if you end up using this sort of uh, 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 platform or whatever this this the, the guidebook uh, do email us I will share again with the Sarah the information of our emails and where to find us online we would love to hear what people are, are doing with 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 this uh, with this guidebook with this campaign um, again, it depends on your context. We're just kind of giving you the manual for you to go, go ahead and, uh, and do the great work. Yeah. How um, could this work during social distancing? Um, is it possible to have a deep experience via Zoom? That's from yeah. our participant, Kim. Yeah, that's, that's an important question. Um, I think there is. Uh, I think there is a way to do this. I, I was leading a small group conversation through Zoom on the way of love. Um, I think the, if you have too large of a group, I think Zoom could be a part of it where you can see people's faces. Um, and Zoom also has the, the ability to break out into smaller groups. Um, so you could, you could use that. You can introduce the topic, um, um, have a specific question. And then if you have more than 20 people um, or more than 15 people, um, break them out into, into separate groups. So they're able to build community with smaller groups because sometimes it's hard to do that in large groups. So smaller groups is the way to go. I think, I think Zoom could be a good platform um, to do that. Um, yes. Uh, Pete says, ideal to use in interfaith meetings or a whole neighborhood or small towns and all churches in the town to be beloved community. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't have to just be, you know, around faith communities. It could be across the board. Um, so even, uh, well, this is, during, you can even start your vestry meetings with story sharing kind of build relationships with your vestries. That sometimes is hard. <laughs> I haven't been part of a vestry, but I'm the daughter of two priests. I'm a PK square. Um, and I, I've known, I've heard from experience that vestry meetings could be tense. So I think story sharing, beginning your meetings like that with story sharing or a community gathering, talking about 
um, I don't know, situations that affect the whole community, be political or social, whatever, it could be a great way to get to know people, build relationships, and have a better and uh, loving conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I say better and loving conversations. That is what we need more of. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, Sandy, once again, thank you so much for all of your wisdom and grace and really allowing us to hear your story. Um, that was really powerful um, and completely unexpected. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm excited to, to learn and hear more from you um, across the board over the many years um, that, that you will be active within the church. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again for this opportunity and for everybody that gathered and that was a part of this conversation. Uh, I'm so grateful for this. Thank you.